how are you going to explain that when it goes on the internet? I'm not running for uh, I'm not running for Florence County Council. <laughs> for we don't worry too much about political correctness anyway. You well, uh, if, if, some, if you're not clear on some of the candidates' positions, you know, don't hesitate to contact these people. All the contact information is public info for everyone who's filed for office in Lexington County. So the good thing about politics here is that it's, it's entertaining and minimal. So we've got, but anyway, I want to thank everyone. We've got one more candidate left, not the last one. Yeah. District uh, House Seat 39, Eddie McCain. Eddie, come on up. Eddie. And Eddie's got something around his neck he wants to explain to everyone. And show, show America, make sure they got it on the on video. Uh, who's, uh, well, this is my business card that says Freedom Nuts. We're nuts about freedom. And uh, the reason why that has become my slogan, as I've mentioned before, is that it just seems like every time I turn around from the county level all the way to the federal level, we've always got somebody trying to pass legislation that's taking more and more of our freedoms away from us. Um, I think last week I spoke and uh, I mentioned that uh, you know, if we just simply allow people to, to earn an income out of their home, we would eliminate a lot of our economic problems. And I'm kind of a reflection to that a little bit. Uh, this coming July, my wife and I have been married 28 years. And uh, when I got married, my wife and I married, I was actually living in Lynchburg, Virginia. And like most young married couples in college, we were broke. I mean, we didn't have any money. And uh, I remember one day uh, telling my wife, I said, you know what, baby? I made more money than this. I was working a minimum wage job while I was going through college, and she was doing the same thing. I made more money than this when I was in high school pushing a lawnmower. But I, I didn't have enough money to buy a lawnmower. I didn't have enough money to start a business. But I got to thinking one day, I went to a, um, a repair shop, a guy that repairs lawnmowers and weed eaters. He had a lawn boy push mower he wanted $100 for, and he had a weed eater that he wanted $100 for. So I'm thinking, 200 bucks, I can be in business. But I didn't have 200 bucks. So I went out on a Friday, all day long. I didn't have class that day. I went out all day long knocking on doors, residential doors, business doors, and at the end of the day, I had 11 people who said I could cut their grass. That, um, that evening, I went to this store. I wrote a hot check, man. I ain't have a dime in my bank account. I wrote a $200 check to this guy for the lawnmower and the weed eater. <coughs> Saturday morning, I was a grass cutting fool. I cut grass from sun up to sun down. Monday morning, I had my money. I was, at the, I was literally at the bank door before they opened. I was terrified of getting caught with a bad check. I, and uh, they opened up, the, they unlocked the door, I walked in, I deposited that money into the bank account, and the Lone Ranger was in business. All right. And for the next three years, I pushed the lawnmower through college. Um, I hired people that I went to school with to help me. I started out doing a few houses and a few small places like Burger King and an appliance store. And uh, three years later, when I gave it up, I was doing apartment complexes. I, I was buying, instead of buying a hundred dollar long bore, long boy, long bore, I was now buying three thousand dollar pieces of equipment. I never asked for anybody's permission to go in business. I never bought a business license. The only thing, the only thing I, the only thing I did buy was liability insurance. You know, in case a rock flew up and hit somebody's, hit, hit a person or, or hit somebody. Um, and I did okay. I made money, able to take care of my family. My, uh, um, I, I was able to help other guys I went to school with, who helped me push more and more. Sometimes I have as many as five or six guys out there pushing boards on his apartment complexes. Today, if I was in that same situation, I couldn't do it. I, I wouldn't be able to afford the, 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 the license and all the other requirements. Matter of fact, one of the reasons why I got out of the business is because I was looking at a, a, a apartment complex they needed somebody to cut their grass but it was it was I guess it was a government-owned complex 
And one of the requirements was you had to hire people that worked inside that complex. And this is where all the thugs lived. And um, I wasn't going to do that. I wasn't going to hire people that I afraid they're going to steal my equipment. But the, the bottom line is, is that people have a right to eat. People have a right to have a, a roof over their head. And government does not have the right to tell you you can't start a business unless you pay them first, unless you get approval from them. You should be able to earn, earn your own income without having anything at all to do with the government, period. It's not the government's business for, to tell you you can't do something. When the government oppresses people like that, then people, it puts people into a, a negative thinking process to where they, they just don't know they can help themselves. Now, I'll give you one more illustration, and I'll, I'll sit down because I know I'm probably over extending my time. But during the same period is when video stores started opening up. We know how you go to the store and rent a video, VHS video. And there was a company in Lynchburg, Virginia called Adventureland, Adventureland Video. It was a brand new concept back in 1984, 85. This is all this was taking place to actually go and rent a video. You, know, and rent a, you rented the machines back then. Nobody owned VCRs. You had to rent the VCR and then you rent the, the video. Well, they had a camcorder. Now, I'm not talking about the camcorders you see today. But they, they, had, they were selling camcorders where you had the big, the big side bag. It was like 2,000 bucks. And that was a, that's a lot of money now. That's a whole lot of money to me back in 1984. And I wanted that camera so bad. I would go in there and I'd play with it, but I just didn't have the money for it. And uh, they would finance it with $500 down. So I got to thinking, how can I make that camera pay for itself? And I figured it out. I said, man, I know, I know nothing about video. Nothing. I don't know what panning is or nothing, but I knew I wanted that. And it was color, too. It wasn't black and white. It was color. I said, if I can get that, man, I can do birthday parties, I can do weddings, I can do all kinds of things and make it pay for itself. So I took my master car that had a $500 lemon on it, and I put $500 on that machine, financed it. My payments were like $65 a month. I took that camera back to the trailer park I was living in, the 501 trailer court, right behind Honky Tonk Heaven, or whatever it was called. <laughs> And I got that camera and I started playing around the neighborhood. And I put the word out, any birthday parties, I'll do it for free. Because I just want to learn how to use the camera. I had a guy across the street was having a party. I went over there and I learned how to pan, how to scan, and all this kind of got where I could do it pretty well. And I'd go to my friend's house, I'd be videotaping, and I got where I was pretty good. You know what I did? I went to, I didn't, I didn't call the government, I didn't go ask for a business license. I just went straight to the uh, the printing shop and said, I want some cars printed up. I'm going to call myself Capture the Moment Video Services. Had some business cars printed up. I met a guy who was an artist. He drew me up some flyers. I passed them out. Next thing you know, I'm doing weddings. I'm doing kindergarten graduations. I'm doing video letters. People who had loved ones who were in the military before, long before I joined. And they were overseas. I put them on tape and they mailed a VHS tape. To their loved ones. But bottom line is, I paid for my camera and I put money in my pocket. I remember one day I came home. I made hundred eighty dollars that day. I was the happiest guy in the world. I started out that morning with no money in my pocket, come home with hundred eighty bucks. I was like, man, this is what it's all about. Never saw after a business license. I just went and did it. And that's that's how it needs to be today. People need to realize that they have capabilities. They have God-given talents with just a little bit of initiative, a little bit of creativity. There are things that you can do that you can bring money home. You don't have to live in poverty. You don't have to have bills piling up because you can't pay them. You can earn your own money. There are books. You can go to the bookstore and get all kinds of ideas. Go to the business section. And you'll find books, 280 businesses you can start from home, 400 businesses you can start for less than 200, there are all kinds of books that give you, they don't really give you all the details, but it gives you the big picture and it helps you think and become creative on how you can build small businesses for yourself.
Yes, sir. Did you pay your FICA taxes? <laughs> FIC. You cut the camera off. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, I, no, I, did, I did pay taxes, yeah. Hey, when did it become law that you had to have a business license? It was probably, to be honest with you, it was probably law back then. <laughs> I just didn't know me. Yeah, that was a law. I just, I just didn't know anybody. They didn't enforce it the way they do now. He does yeah, need well, a business they, license. How did you can. pay FICA taxes without business license? How did you pay on your employees? <laughs> <laughs> Get I, cash I, I, money. I tell, you, I tell you exactly what I did, man. I, I paid five bucks an hour. <laughs> cash. <laughs> cash. No. Cash on the label. I just want to tell you, Ron, uh, with your information and knowledge that you have, he may be out of a job in here. You know how to pan and do all that. It's kind of kind of hard to fire a volunteer. <laughs> yeah, but we can cut your pay. <laughs> now you have a business license for a sale of lemonade. Eddie. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's nuts. Eddie, you had independent contractors. Yes. You, you just pay them. Let them worry about their own tax. Uh, right, that's what I did. I just, 1099. That's right. I just, you know. One more question. I have the question. Yeah, 1099. Yeah, uh, it never made to the mail. Okay, let's go to Eddie for Okay. Thank you go, man.